Again, my name is John Bullard. Um, there's a, um, a law called Gaul's Law, G A L L S Law. I advise everybody in this room to take a look at it. What it basically says is that a complex system that works is invariably found with the Gaul's Law. Oh, my God, John, you're supposed to ask these things. <laughs> well, let me just finish Gaul's Law, which is a very quick point. Um, a complex system that works is invariably found to have evolved from a simple system that worked. And the inverse is also true. A complex system designed from scratch invariably never works and cannot be made to work. And I think that's a pretty powerful statement in and around all the blockchain and stuff. And Dave and I first got talking almost 20 years ago when I was in Barclays and Dave was still doing very much the same thing. I don't think he got anything on, on his nether regions at that time. But um, uh, I still do all in Barclays, so that would um, be easier. But basically, you've got to have a trust model. You've got to have a, a framework, a check clearing system, set of rules, a Visa MasterCard set of rules, where the liability flows are clear. Who's on the hook for what and when? And the technology is the easy bit. It'll fit in in various bits. And Dave and I have been involved in a sort of journey of PKI on this space around digital identity for the last 18 years. And, you know, it, it works, it exists. But that rule set is stuck doing nothing in some product shelf in, in uh, Austin, Texas. So it shows you just how difficult it is to really get it up and running. And the banks built it. It was, well, it's gonna, it was great to my ex governance point, right? Mm -hmm. Which is this goes to Mike's governance point. Which is which is that, you know, I think that I mean I don't want to deride them as kind of teenage angry white male pseudo libertarians, but, <laughs> but, but, but the point is if you're a twenty year old undergraduate in computer science at MIT, having your self-sovereign identity and sticking it to the man, you know, sounds like a great idea. But when your grandma presses the wrong button in an email, and now all of a sudden her house belongs to someone who meets, and there's nothing yeah. you can do about it, not such a great idea. I mean, the reason we have intermediation in financial services is because of a thousand years of, of long and painful uh, lesson learning. So, so this idea that we want this trustless Invite. That's not clear to me at all. I don't want to try. I want institutions that can be held accountable for these kind of things. But how they're governed, I think, is more complex. And I, I suspect Mike is right, which is there is room for disruption at that level. You know, the kind of institutional, the way things are organized. Is it possible we can have a more decentralized alternative? I, I'm, I'm prepared to think that's, that's a real possibility. So, so can we disrupt? Yes. Are we going to do away with institutions? I'm not sure I see that. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly from a maturity perspective, as I was saying, I, no, I agree. I think the role of those institutions may well change in, in that environment. But it seems, yeah, again, I mean, in the charity world, there's been a slow process of greater and greater intermediation away from a kind of medieval model of arms giving directly to people who lived you know, next door to you in the, in the parish, and that was for a reason. You know, urbanisation meant that the scale and nature of the problems made that totally unfeasible. The charitable organisation arose as a way of kind of making it feasible to do that. Over time, that's developed into kind of massive global aid agencies because they have the <coughs> scale and distribution networks to make that work. There is an interesting trend back the other way in, in the sector I work in, in that models of things like direct giving, so give directly, uh, people giving uh, direct trash, uh, cash tra trash transfers, that would be probably, uh, <laughs> cash transfers to, to the developing world in order, you know, on, the, on the basis that actually the most effective way to empower people to solve those problems is just to give them money and with no strings attached. It seems to be gaining quite a lot of currency. Maybe you can't extrapolate from that to the whole sector is going to become decentralised, but I suppose the interesting question is, if the alternative of kind of a decentralized model is available, should that lead us to question what it is about centralization that was valuable in the first place, rather than just having it as an assumption that the only way of doing these things is to have very complex centralized organizations? That I think the answer will be somewhere in the middle, a level of decentralization, and then you hit upon the kind of sweet spot of well, we need that level of organization. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's a, it's, a, it's a parallel discussion, which isn't, isn't you know, you know, going to impact what we're talking about today. But this idea that the new technologies of, of uh, you know, mobile phones and social networks um, 
uh, reconstitute the sort of mutual cross obligations of the pre-industrial society. I think that's true. So he said, well, you know, we have we have structures with us now, institutional structures, which are re a reaction to the urban anonymity uh, of the industrial revolution, and actually we're allowing a new kind of memory to evolve, which takes us back to the future yeah. in an interesting way. I agree with you about that, and it, it is quite possible those institutions uh, will grow up around that. But when it comes to when it comes to the complete decentralisation, uh, I, I, I'm not comfortable with that because if you, if you have no accountability at all. You know, the Bitcoin, it's like an electronic Somalia, it's just warlords, you know, I mean, it's like, when, like, I want to know who's got, I want those people to be accountable, you know, this Bitcoin idea that, that anybody can pass the money around, that it's good for the little guy, is a joke, that just means the rich and the, the powerful remain unaccountable, and that, and that can't be the goal that we want from all this, so I agree with you about the potential for radical change in institutional structures, but doing away with them, I, I, I can't see it. I'd like to thank all our speakers, our panel. Uh, our speakers earlier today, thank you all so much. Um, look, I think we've got a great network here. Uh, I know Richard in particular uh, and Beth has worked very hard pulling this event together, so thank you so much for them, their efforts. Hopefully the conversations will carry on. Uh, we'd really like to keep this community going. I think there's something very exciting, very interesting. There's definitely business to be done. I can see so many people making connections here. So hopefully this will be useful. Do stay in touch. Uh, myself and Richard are very easy to find online. Uh, just Google Glenn Parry, at UE you'll find me. Uh, Richard, also easy to find. Uh, so stay in touch. We'll try and build this network. If you're all keen, we'll run further events. S find out from you where you'd like us to focus next. Keep building the relationships because there's clearly something here. Uh, and, and as I guess our, our expert panel pointed out, this is probably the early steam engine. Take it for you know, this ain't it. <laughs> but we can maybe at this point influence what the future is. Uh, and finally, thanks so much for Tech UK for hosting us here. Wonderful location for us. Uh, so thanks to you, and we'll all we'll continue our conversation over a glass of wine, very soon. Thank you.